Hey all here, OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Xiaomi Smart AI Translator. It's a small gadget the size of an iPod Shuffle that sells for about 50 bucks, sometimes goes on sale as low as 40, and it uh, promises to have instant translation for up to 14 languages, which sounds very impressive on paper. Because more and more people are traveling these days, uh, having the ability to tr communicate your thoughts effectively even in new countries and new regions is a very promising uh, idea. Of course, a translation has been a subject of many interesting gadgets over the years, including wireless earbuds that uh, tries to have the same feature. Also, we have apps now such as uh, you know Google Translate, which kind of do the same thing on the phone. So whether this is something that can, can stand out uh, is the biggest question that we'll be exploring. It comes in a few different colors. Again, the price point is very low cost, as is most Xiaomi products. Inside, we have just the AI translator right on top. We're going to take a closer look at it in a second. We have a micro USB cable for charging. There's a small pouch that contains the more detailed instruction manuals, but unfortunately it seems like it's printed exclusively in Chinese. So taking a closer look at the design of the AI translator first, uh, the overall build is very strong. The entire thing is made out of aluminum, which uh, again reminds me of the iPod Shuffle in terms of dimensions and the feel. Even the bottom here, which is made out of the speaker grill, if you flip it over, looks extremely like an iPod's display, which is kind of neat. Very simple, modern overall look. Uh, there are a few controls in the center here for adjusting things like volume for the speaker and the mic, and there are just two keys, a microphone key and a me key. If I'm not mistaken, tapping on me is what you can tap on to speak into the device and it's going to translate that into the language that you select and then the other person can tap on the microphone to then speak in their language for you to hear translated into something like English for instance. On the bottom there's also a headphone port if you want to use headphones as opposed to a speaker. There's also a micro USB port for charging and just a power switch on the very top and that's pretty much it. Uh, the biggest draw here if you look and think a little closely is that this device needs data to work. It what I kind of hoped that this product could have done is included the kind of translation part offline with maybe some built-in storage and probably with a lot more processing going on, but pretty much it's a voice remote for the, for the phone packaged as this uh, translator. So here's the app that you need to download on the phone. It's called M-O-Y-U. It's not using the Xiaomi Mi Home app, so that's something to keep in mind. You can find it directly in the Play Store, however, so you don't have to download the QR code necessarily. So once the app opens up, you have to then bind it with this uh, smart AI translator. And something that's interesting is it doesn't need to connect to the phone using, let's say, uh, Bluetooth necessarily. It has a Wi-Fi uh, chip inside, so it can connect to a router or a hotspot, and whenever there's any Internet, you can do instant translation as a dedicated unit. Otherwise, let's go through the setup. So the first thing you have to do is not actually pair it, but connect the device into the internet. So uh, what you do is you activate the connection mode by tapping on the volume plus key and the uh, up key, which is the power key. All the voice prompts by default are in Chinese, however, so that's uh, something to keep in mind, but it's going to speak to you. So for instance, that means we've exited out of the connection mode. And now it's open the connection mode, the green light is flashing, and uh, we are able to then proceed. Whether it's connecting the AI remote to Wi-Fi router directly, or connecting it to my phone, it's going to play a sound within 20 centimeters to connect, so very interesting. Let's tap on play. So this series of sounds, for whatever reason, translates into the password for the device. It says it's connected to the internet now, so uh, we are done with this. I can now try and set it up, so I can hold down uh, this bottom key here and say hello, so let's try that. Hello. And it seems like it's registered that, so this function is probably working. Let's press on All done. Right. After we are connected to the internet, we can now bind it to the app. So this is an interesting kind of reverse process almost. And how this process works is we now press on the volume down minus key and the power key together, and then the translator is going to speak a code that we enter onto the app for it to bind. Now, unfortunately, this process is also done in Chinese, the voice prompts which are programmed into the translator. So it's a little difficult for uh, kind of foreign customers to pick up, uh, and how you can kind of figure this out is use another translation tool like 
Google Translate to listen onto what the remote is saying and then translate that so that you can enter the code. Definitely not super intuitive. This is a product that I think was designed only for mainland China use, uh, so it seems, but it's been exported. So let's try that right now. So if we're going to try and enter the, the password here. So it just told us that the password is 8055 and we've set up correctly. We can change things like language. This is uh, customizing what the keys correspond to. So me is the language that I speak, so I chose English. So if I tap on the me key, that will translate whatever phrase I say into Chinese. But I can also change that into a different language, and these are the 14 that are supported, including Japanese, Korean, French, German, Spanish, Russian, Portuguese, Italian, Dutch, Danish, Finnish, and Swedish. So let's do a quick demo right now. I'm going to speak in English and try to translate it into Chinese, such as hello. Hello. So that was the translation to Chinese. Let's turn up the volume and press on it again. So after you've translated the last phrase, it's remembered into the device's memory. So I can tap on this again to play back whatever it was translated. So now let's try some of the other language settings, like Spanish, for instance. Hola, esta es una prueba. Hello, this is a test. So that seems to be working quite well, and vice versa. I can also, let's say, this is a test back. Se trata de una prueba de nuevo. Reaction speed seems to be quite good. It's dependent on your network speed. So if you're a little further from the Wi-Fi router, it's going to be slightly more delayed, but not too bad. Uh, if you're closer to a hotspot, it's going to be a little faster as well. And after doing a little bit more testing with it, I would say that for most phrases, especially those which are vernacular, widely used, especially shorter ones, are translated quite well. But it does still get confused over certain phrases that are perhaps specific to different regions. Especially if you try to use longer sentences, it gets tied up. So for instance, if I try and say, I don't like resistive touchscreens on my cell phones. No me gusta este teléfono celular porque usar una pantalla resistiva. Do not this phone like me use the gray screen? So you can tell that that really didn't make any sense because it was kind of jumping around and trying to figure out what some of these less commonly used words like resistive touchscreen actually mean. So it runs into some issues when you are using really long sentences. You kind of have to stop in between and do some micro translations along the way. So that is a little disappointing because I think in even Google Translate, it will still get most of that correct, uh, even though Google Translate isn't perfect. It does seem like the English and Chinese translations are the most accurate and powerful out of the 14. So if I just even speak a little bit longer sentences in English, it does seem to translate that to Chinese with a fairly high level of precision. Here's a test. This is a test of a hard translation with a long sentence. I am going to pause in between certain words and see if it still catches them grammatically and syntactically correctly. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. Test of a hard translation with a long sentence. I'm going to pause in between certain words and see if it still catches them grammatically and syntactically correctly. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. So yeah, not too shabby there with the Chinese and English functionality. Now you can also take a look at translation history, and it's going to pull through everything that you've spoken since it's now connected to this account. So it can go all the way to the back of time, including what is my name, who are you, hello, uh, and uh, all the things that I've tried both in Spanish as well as in Chinese, and vice versa. So it also gives you a text version as well, which is pretty neat. You can even copy some of this text if you want to keep it. So that's pretty much it as far as the translation features are concerned. There are a few additional kind of smart AI features, which is basically like the Alexa or Google Assistant functions, but they are exclusively in Chinese because that's the part that's coded hard-coded in that's very similar to you know the the power on, the voice prompts. So I can tap on the center key there to basically use a voice command but it's using Xiaomi's proprietary AI engine, uh, similar to their uh, other smart AI products like their speakers, and it is, again, only in Chinese, so it's only going to work if you speak Chinese. Let's do a quick test of that. 
，今天的天气怎么样？北京今天晴，十三度到二十四度，西北风三级，空气质量优。So it basically just told me the temperature, as well as the wind, as well as the kind of condition of the air in Beijing. Or you can even play back music. So you can ask the artist. You can ask a song. We're gonna try classical music because of copyright reasons. 放传统音乐。好的，播放中国传统民歌。So it does actually work, and、uh, that's where again having a good speaker would probably be beneficial.、Uh, and I can tap on the center key there just to pause the sound.、Uh, you can also plug in your own headphones if you just want to listen to that、uh, privately. So as long as you have internet, it can stream back music as well through some internet stations that it finds somehow. So that's pretty much it as far as our hands-on review of the Xiaomi Smart AI Translator. It's more of a two-in-one product because it's a, it's a translator, but the AI AI part is basically saying that it's a.、Um, A voice assistant-enabled remote. You can think of it as an Echo remote.、Uh, if it was using Alexa, but instead it's using Xiaomi's own system designed only in Mandarin Chinese. So the only feature that you can access if you wanted to purchase it outside of China would probably be for the translation, which it does a decent job、uh, of, because it's able to connect to the internet using Wi-Fi or to the phone using Bluetooth and then hotspots using your phone's data.、Uh, the translation works best between Chinese and English languages. So if you're visiting China, this Does work quite well. The speaker does get quite loud. The microphone picks up the voice very well. But、uh, other languages, I think, need a little bit of work. But considering the low price point, as well as the nice hardware, the compact form factor,、uh, the fact that it's easier to understand because you have one button dedicated for you, one button dedicated for your guest,、uh, perhaps it's worth taking a closer look at if you have、uh, access to data. Anyways, then、uh, this is not a bad buy because again, the hardware and the price are both very attractive. You can check out more details down in the links down below. But for now, that's been our. Video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our hands-on with the Xiaomi Smart AI translator.